Well, it's cold, dark and wet in Scotland. Nothing too unusual as it's officially winter season now. But to me, it's bike building season. And how better to kick off the season with a brand new inspired hex. Not that there's anything wrong with this one though. Despite a couple of battle scars, this particular bike has been the most reliable bike I've ever had. The only mechanical I can think of is just a couple of punches. And before you ask, nah, this isn't for sale, I've got plans for it. But as for the new bike, the Cute Thief Mark II has been extra busy collecting all the parts I might need. How does it compare with the original Thief, I wonder? Well, it looks promising. Let's get started. So here is the new 2022 inspired hex. They've gone for a lovely deep metallic red with chrome graphics and I can honestly say it's one of the nicest colours they've done for a while. I'm yet to get decent studio lighting so I can't really do it full justice on camera but I can't wait to get this built and see how it looks. I asked the Cute Thief Mark II to find some chrome or silver parts to match with the chrome graphics. If it works it could be pretty amazing. Other than the paint, not much has changed with the rest of the frame from last year's. You still get an awesome one piece dropout and 180mm post mount disc mount. The dropouts themselves are 135mm by 12mm axle, and the axle itself is simpler than last year's, and the cute thief has even polished the head to match the graphics. What a good boy! And of course, you still get a tapered head tube. I wonder what headset is found to fit this head tube. Looks like an FSA model that is stripped silver and polished up for me. Probably with some caustic soda and autosol if I know him. It's a shame I didn't ask him to get a new headset press though. I guess my old faithful block of wood will have to do. Bike mechanics, look away now. Works so well though, a good Christmas present idea perhaps. I was also provided a new hex fork in matching red. No changes from last year, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It has a matching 180mm post mount disc mount. More polished parts on this 15mm axle. And of course a matching taper steerer. I'm extremely impressed with my new Cute Thief, he's applied me with a choice of stem. A black one, like I normally use, or a silver one that might match the colour coordination better. We're going to try the silver hope stem, but if it looks weird, I'll go back to black. I get asked a lot about how I run a front hose through the fork. Well, Inspired make it easy with an integrated top cap, which I'll go into more detail later when I fit the brakes. The bars are the ever comfy and ever faithful Inspired High Rise T models. I announce the bike build with a traditional blast on the bar horn. The album is in the works. Looks good, but does need some bling. I get an extra inch on my hops with every bolt swapped to titanium. And who doesn't enjoy an extra six inches, eh? We've done the steering, let's do the seatering. A matching Hope seat clamp appears. The cheek gripper is a one piece inspired combo, similar to the one I ran on my old bike but with a bit extra padding. This is a 25.4 post and the frame is for 27.2mm, so I must increase its diameter with a shim. Or sure, we can't assume its gender. Look at 
Looks neat. Let's fill this hole with something. A SRAM bottom bracket should do nicely. I heard they're really easy to fit too. Haha, <laughs> the rumours were true. It was really tempting to use my old silver cranks, but I have one item that the Cute Thief Mark II didn't get me. These SRAM GX cranks, which are my favourite cranks but now discontinued in a 24 mm axle, were very kindly sent to me by James and Rupert. I've had them for almost a year, waiting for a bike worthy of a fresh pair of cranks. James, Rupert, if you're watching this, then thank you very much. You both rock. I like these cranks because they're stiff, strong, and fairly light. They also fit the inspired integrated bash and sprocket perfectly. Black cranks look cool, but I'd still like a dash of silver. Luckily, I know where there's a silver bolt I can use. Butterfingers. It's a little old, so I'll give it a quick polish with my Dremel and wire wool combo. That'll do, pig. From one spinny thing to another, let's talk wheels. You may have seen my rear wheel from my recent wheel building tutorials, but for those that haven't, the hub is an Industry 9 Hydra. These things are nuts with 690 engagement points. Quite the step up from just 72 that I've been using for the last four years. The rim is a light bicycle Recon Carbon 26 inch and 38mm width. I've used these rims for the past few years and never broken one. And as usual, I use alloy nipples. I'm yet to break one of these either. Silver graphics look great, but I've got something pretty special for this build. Lucy at Indie Print went above and beyond to get these chrome stickers made in time for this build. The quality is fantastic and it's a great match for the chrome frame graphics. She does a huge range of decals, so give your bike a new look and support a cool business by clicking the link in the description below. How cool does that look? Thanks Lucy. Thusi. Going tubeless, so I added some rim tape. And a rim pack valve. After testing a lot of tyres over these last few years, I found the Maxxis Icon to be my favourite. The tread is a great compromise between off-road grip and still fast rolling for street and park. The compound isn't too soft or hard, the volume is just right and it's easy to set up tubeless. It isn't too heavy and doesn't feel overly harsh either. Unlike the bottom bracket, they're really easy to fit. Now I only use half effort there as I still need to fit the insert. And just like the Maxxis is my favourite tyre, Rimpact makes my favourite insert. It's the best compromise of weight, price, protection and ease of fitting. The trick to getting the tyre on with inserts is to really lift the tyre up and push the bead under the insert. Now I get to try my favourite workshop tool. The compressor combined with a park tool inflator makes inflating tyres actually enjoyable. Still so scary though. We're not done yet though, the wheel is hungry and needs feeding.
my wheels seem to really enjoy a continental breakfast. But it's a young wheel, so I need to use a feeding bottle. There you go, young one. And to answer the question I get asked almost every day, 40. I run 40 PSI. Well, maybe 38 at the weekends, but 40 the other days. Except bank holidays, I let the tyre choose on those days. Before I fit the wheel, I need to steal my rotors from my old bike. The cute Thief Mark II gets docked some points for not supplying me with new brakes. I run 203 mil rotors because I don't see the need to compromise on brake power. I have a hard time trusting the power of 180 mil rotors. Here's hoping there's a rear sprocket and spacers in this box. There was. Gonna fit them and the 18.2 sprocket, and then I can fit the wheel to the bike. Ah, kitty, we have a problem. The spaces are too wide and the lock ring hits the frame. I need to find some different ones. Well, I found some. They're not the prettiest, but the lock ring is now sitting further in, so it should hopefully clear the frame. Much better. Now I just need to repeat the process with the matching light bicycle Intra 9 Hydra front wheel, starting with the decals. Then the tubeless tape. The valve. And then the tyre. I run the same tyres front and rear, although I don't run an insert on the front wheel. This makes fitting the tyre even quicker. Lastly, the rotor gets fitted. I love it when both wheels are fitted. You get a sense of how the bike's going to look now. I seriously love this colour. With the rotors already fitted, it makes sense to fit the rest of the stopperoos. To fit 203mm rotors with mounts for 180mm, I use a Hope H adapter. That then lets me bolt my Hayes Dominion A4 brakes with no extra spacers or washers, which is nice. Now to route the hose through the fork. I lift the lever to a position where the fluid won't fall out, undo the hose, shove it up the fork's arse, greet it at the stem, Thread through the fork's top cap, refit the top cap, and refit the hose. If done carefully, the brake won't need bleeding. However, I wasn't careful enough, so a quick top up is needed. Perfect. 
Rather than using an ugly zip tie to secure the hose, I'm going to use a neater stick-on guide. I'm happy with that. It's the same H adapter for the rear brake. and a matching Hayes Dominion A4 brake. Now I've been using these brakes for a while now and I can actually honestly say they're the best brakes I've ever used. Now I paid for these myself too, so zero bias in that opinion. I was concerned the crosshair adjusters used to center the caliber would be a weak point, but I've not had a single issue, even with some pretty harsh use. And I absolutely love how easy they make it to set up the brake with no rubbing. It's an absolute genius idea. Now the stop roos are fitted, let's move on to the chain arena. If you've seen my builds before, you know I'll use a KMC chain on my trials bikes. Specifically, the Z1 EHX, as it's strong and resists stretching pretty well. That said, all chains do stretch, so with it being a new chain, it's a very tight fit, and I won't need to use a tensioner until it has. Now this is possibly too tight, if nasty things start to happen, I'll add a link and a tensioner and remove the link once it stretches after a couple of rides. I do like how neat it looks though. Next, let's see what pedals we have. Some Perlusal models? Oh wait, hang on. Ah, the new inspired nylon pedals. This is my first time seeing them. I'm a fan of nylon pedals, so I'm stoked inspired now have their own version. Oh, I like them already. Now it can't be a bike without some decent grips. In my case, some ODI long neck lock-ons, which are my personal grip of choice. Nice diameter, great grip with or without gloves, and they last for ages despite being quite soft. And the cute thief has even decided to make the clamp silver to match the rest of the bike's theme. Almost done. Just need to sort out the rear hose and make sure the bolts are tight and bars are straight. But also, to protect the amazing paint, I'm going to apply some Huckett Products frame protector samples I've been sent. Rather than a camo style, like my signature protectors, these are for those who just want something simple, so they're clear with just my logo to remind you how awesome I am. First, I rub down with some alcohol, and then I clean the bike. Then on goes the protectors. What do you think? And even though I don't need it, I fit a Tarty Bikes chainstay protector because they're just such an awesome shop. Despite my shoulder injury, I can't help but going out and doing a couple of hops just to see how it feels. A little crunchy with the tight chain, but I think this bike and I are going to get on pretty well. So there we go, my new 2022 inspired hex. What do you think? Huge thanks to the cute thief for stealing these parts, and to inspired, tarty bikes, industry 9, light bicycle, ODI and hook it products for letting him. I mean, he's too cute to say no to. And a special thanks again to Lucy from IndiePrint for her work with the rim decals. When my shoulder is feeling up for it, I'll be back riding and putting this bike through its paces. Until then, thanks for watching, go join my Patreon, buy some merch, or even give a donation. Link's all in my description. Have a great week, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.